and welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology. And today's going to be a pretty short episode. Trust me, the last two videos I made on this Compact Notebook 100 are much more interesting than this video is going to be. So both of those links will be in the description. If you haven't seen them yet, I suggest you check them out first because it will explain why I'm doing what I am doing in this video. So today we're going to take a look at this PC once again. Uh, after I got the hard drive back up and running and the trackpad repaired as well, I started playing around with it a bit and I found something really really interesting that I want to show you guys. So let's go ahead and move over to, uh, or actually I'll bring the camera over here and we can check out what I'm talking about. And for those of you who did not see my last video on this PC, I'm just going to go ahead and read off some system specifications from the BIOS real quick to give you guys a general idea of what kind of system hardware we are working with. But once again, I suggest you check out both the teardown video and part one of the laptop overview because once again, there's a little bit more information in both of those videos. So I'm going to power this on now. I'm actually going to bring the mic down close to the PC so we can get all of those uh, good old computer sounds just like I did with my uh, gaming or my uh, sleeper PC video. So I'm gonna bring the mic down here and power this thing on. There we go. And we are in the BIOS. This system is rocking an AMD K6 running at 475 megahertz. We have 128 megabytes of RAM installed in the system. And we're running off a five gigabyte Hitachi hard drive. I think I'll put an annotation in if that's wrong. I'm pretty sure it was a Hitachi hard drive though. So I'm gonna exit out of this and show you what I was talking about uh, when I say I found something interesting with the system. So I'm gonna exit well, without saving. Okay, doesn't matter. All right, and it says suspend to disk partition missing, uh, run hibernate.exe to correct this problem. So I thought there was a version of Windows installed on this system, but something happened to it. Uh, something was badly corrupted or something like that. So I went to plop and tried to boot from the hard drive. And for some reason it's entering the system configuration utility again. Uh, I want to get out of that. So I might just uh, cut the clip here and come back. All right, so I rebooted the system and now we are in the plop interface. And when I first got here after repairing the computer, I saw that it gave me the option to boot from the forced partition of the hard drive. Uh, I went ahead and clicked this, didn't really think anything would happen, uh, but to my surprise, something did. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that option now. And as you can see, there actually is an installation of Windows XP on the system. It was very bloated, uh, ugh, excuse me. It was very bloated when I first got to it. I spent a couple hours deleting a ton of programs. Uh, so I finally got it to the point where it is usable. Now we're just gonna take a look and explore around a little bit using Windows XP on this system. So I'm just going to let it boot into the desktop. It's not password protected or anything, which is nice. Uh, I'm going to let it boot into the desktop. If you guys really care about the boot time, once again, as usual, someone can go ahead and post the boot time in the comments section, uh, but I am not going to time it right now. And we should get the start tone in just a few seconds. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe just an error, uh, error beat. Ah, there we go. And as you can see, despite my best efforts to clean everything up on the system, the thing still runs pretty slow. Uh, I think to get it back to where it should be, I would have to completely reinstall Windows XP. Uh, actually, I don't think this system originally shipped with Windows XP. I'm pretty sure it shipped with either uh, Windows 2000 or Windows 98. So someone has upgraded this to Windows XP. And there you go. As you can see, we are fully booted up into the desktop environment. 
So for the past couple of minutes, I've just been playing around with the system, trying to figure out what I want to demonstrate running on this computer, but it is just in incredibly frustrating to use this machine. Just sitting idle, we are using all of the RAM on this system and CPU usage is spiking all over the place. So whatever background programs are still installed on this computer, they are just eating up the system resources. Uh, so as I said, I tried to clean it up the best I could, but obviously the best wasn't enough and this thing is just still incredibly slow. I'm gonna try to open up uh, Device Manager. I did already, but it crashed. So I'll try one more time uh, so we can check out the system hardware through there once again. Uh, as I said in video one, I went over all that though. So that's not really a big deal if we cannot. And I'll try to open up a couple more programs. I could not get network connectivity up and working on this PC. I tried to use my MediaLink wireless adapter, which has worked on many uh, Windows XP installations, but for some reason, it's just not working here. And I tried playing around with the network configuration and I had absolutely no success. Um, so it's, as I said earlier, it's just incredibly frustrating trying to use this system. But as you can see, we're running Microsoft Windows XP Professional Service Pack 2. Uh, the system specifications down here are the same as I said earlier. Let's go to hardware and try to open up the device manager. And I'll also open up the task manager in just a couple seconds to show you what our system resource usage, ah, system resource usage looks like. And it looks like it might actually open this time. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that because the last time it just crashed. I didn't even get this far. And the CPU fan just started spinning up. So let's just take a look at everything. Uh, I'm trying to find something interesting. Oh, there's a Hitachi hard drive. Okay, so that confirms uh, the brand of the hard drive, which I was kind of speculating over earlier. Display adapter, Trident Video Accelerator, Cyberblade i7. Yep, I went over that last video, but now if you guys did not watch the last video, you know what kind of uh, GPU we have in the system. A TXCD224E. Floppy disk drive. Yeah, just the standard floppy disk drive. Uh, IRDA fast infrared port, which is on the side of the system. Network adapters. There used to be a card, uh, a network card installed on the system, but the owner did remove it because the drivers are still here and I cannot get rid of the drivers. I've been trying to uninstall the utility and the drivers, uh, but they're just stuck on the system. The system won't allow me to, which is uh, kind of annoying, uh, but it's not that big of a deal. And I'll probably just wipe this uh, installation anyway because it is incredibly frustrating to use. PCMIA adapters, uh, card bus controller right there, ports, eh, nothing too interesting. Processors, we already know it's an AMD K6. Sound and video devices, nothing super interesting. System devices, do we have anything else? No, not really. Bunch of uh, VIA chipset information. Yeah, and it's a VIA USB controller. So uh, nothing too interesting here. Let me back out of this and open up the task manager. As you can see, I am having all sorts of issues with the task manager as well. It took me five tries to get it open. It failed to open the other four tries. And when I got it open, this is what I got and I can't really do anything else with it. At this point, I can't even close it. So that's kind of frustrating. Um, if some of you guys are starting to get bored, don't worry, I have something interesting coming up towards the end of this video. I actually spent the last couple minutes trying to get a program up and running on this system and I think a lot of you guys are going to like uh, seeing this program running on this PC. So I'm gonna navigate around the system a little bit. We'll gauge system performance. As I said, it is pretty slow. Um, as I have left it here to run for a couple hours, things have leveled out. So as you can see, uh, CPU usage has gone down a little bit. There's still spikes here and there, um, but it's not running at full load constantly like it was when I first booted it up. Uh, so things have settled down quite a bit. And I think we can start browsing around and using some of the features of Windows XP. So starting out, let's just browse around the file system. I have checked beforehand to make sure there's nothing weird or dirty in here. Um, and the file system was actually pretty clean. There's not too much. It's just, there's a lot of programs installed on here uh, that I had to get rid of. So go to my computer. And it's actually pretty, that's not bad. It's pretty snappy. Open up local disk C. Come on. All right, and we'll just browse through. How about we go through the Windows files? It's probably gonna give us a message telling us we shouldn't go in here. Yeah, show contents. All right, so we'll scroll down here, and that's not too bad. Scrolling is pretty smooth, so, uh, oh, it started to lock up a little bit there. 
As far as I'm concerned, I think the performance of Worry Puppy was much, much better uh, on this PC. But then again, that was practically... Well, since it was a live version, it was pretty much a fresh install of Worry Puppy, so it didn't have all this junk on here. I'm going to close out this. Let's try looking for another program. I'm just going to pop open WordPad. It doesn't have uh, the Office Suite installed, so... Uh, I'm not going to be able to open anything like Word or PowerPoint, but we do have WordPad, and I kind of do see this as a Office PC, so uh, this is probably something that the PC would be used for, WordPad, Internet Browsing, Excel, which isn't installed on here, uh, etc. Hello, YouTube. Oh, my goodness. And the keyboard's... Uh, Compared to me, the orientation of the keyboard is sideways, so it's kind of hard for me to type, but as you can see, WordPad works just fine. I'm going to close out of here. Uh, even though we can't connect to the internet, let's just see how long it takes to open up Internet Explorer. Eh, that was pretty slow, but it came up. Um, let's leave this open and try out some multitasking. Yes, I know we are not connected to anything. Thank you. New programs have been installed. Actually, I uninstalled a lot of programs. What else do we have? Um, hmm. Any games? Oh, we could bring up one of the... Uh, oh, it has pinball. Yes. All right. I hope the uh, audio comes out too. Oh, that sounds... Oh, you know, I'm going to bring the microphone down. Oh, it's been forever since I played this. Okay. All right. All right, there we go. Now I figured out how to work it. It's been a while since I've uh, played the pinball game, so I was just pushing keys, trying to figure out uh, which one uh, manipulated the arm. So I'm gonna launch the ball. This is actually, I didn't, I forgot we could do this. It's actually pretty smooth. Yeah. Oh, and this brings me back. I wish Microsoft, I, oh, I wish Microsoft still uh, shipped pinball with their uh, versions of Windows. That would be great. I mean, I could sit here and play this all day. <sighs> Aww. All right, well, let's move on. <laughs> so some things still aren't acting quite right, but after I let it sit here for a couple hours after booting, um, it is performing pretty well, better than it was before. <laughs> Definitely better than it was before. I'm going to go ahead and do that last thing that I said I would. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my flash drive, which is plugged into the USB 1.1 port on the back of the system. Ooh. All right. That's right, we are running Visual Boy Advance on here. If you don't know what that is, it's a Game Boy Advance simulator. Pop that open. And I have Pokemon Fire Red on this flash drive along with that. So let's open that up and see how it runs. And I've been playing around with this for a while and I tried to optimize it the best I could uh, to get the best performance out of it, but it still only plays the, uh, or it still only emulates the game at like 50%. We do have audio though, so I'm gonna tilt the mic over here. Yeah, and as you can see, we're hitting uh, a little under 40% of the actual speed, and that's optimized. Beforehand, I was hitting like 30, so this is the best we can get. Oh my goodness, I had to go through the entire introduction at 40%. That was painful, but now I can actually move around a little bit. And you can see that, yeah, everything's still pretty slow. So uh, definitely isn't a usable emulator PC.
Alright, yeah, this is nowhere near usable. <laughs> Alright, so that's gonna be about it for this video. I hope you guys found this video at least somewhat interesting. I thought it was really neat that there's actually still a Windows installation on this hard drive, even though it appears there is something wrong with the boot partition. But thanks to Plop, we could get into that Windows installation and play around with it. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video. If you didn't like it, please leave a reason why in the comment section. And of course, please do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm probably gonna do at least one more video on this PC. I think I might try to get Android 1.6 up and running on this because this is definitely a step down from the Intel Celeron Coppermine processor uh, that I ran Android 1.6 on in a couple videos ago. Uh, I might actually include that in the description if anyone wants to check that out. So once again, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next installment of A Computers and Technology.